I can't stress to you enough how much there needs to be center spots for the All-Star game again, which will heavily break down in a minute. But also, the hate for Joel Embiid is getting insane. Embiid averages 0.4 more free throw attempts than Luka Doncic and just 1.6 more than Shea Gilgis Alexander. He gets to the foul line less than Giannis Adetokounmpo every game. Yet, unlike some of our game's top stars, Joel gets recklessly torn apart on Twitter and it gets bad with people stating that he's merely a foul drawing merchant who flops for everything he gets. Joel's currently the villain we all love to hate, given he's so tough to hold down, he's great at initiating and selling contact, combined with the fact that he's all about rubbing it in his opponent's grill. However, after Joel was left out as an all-star starter, despite averaging 33.4 points, 9.8 boards, and 4.1 dimes per game, it's maybe time for his plotline to reverse from the villain to the hero. And this is coming from a Raptor fan whose arena chanted this in the first round last year. That said, the hate for Embiid has now gotten out of control, so it's time to reverse the narrative about this man's career before it's too late. Joel Embiid, and quite frankly, no one, deserves this. If you still think I'm being biased, while Embiid is the NBA's best defensive center, in my humble opinion, I actually think Nikola Jokic, as we looked at in a separate video, is all around the best big man in the NBA, and rightfully on the verge of winning his third straight MVP trophy, fueling the Nuggets to the number one seed out west. This video does not in any sense take away from what the Joker's done. In that video, however, Embiid actually came up when Hakeem Olajuwon gave his take about Joel, saying, quote, he's got all the moves, but leveraging the moves is different. Why would he be shooting threes? Hakeem's an all-time great big whose opinion, as I said, we need to take seriously, but it's just become a common theme for whatever reason. Maybe it's a European player fetish to raise players like Luka and Nikola Jokic up, which is fine, but to tear players like LeBron, KD, and Steph down. For fans who claim to be patriotic, yet are tearing down American players by the way, that's quite ironic. But I don't get why we don't respect another player from overseas in Embiid, a product of the Basketball Without Borders program in Africa who literally worked his way up from nothing. While Giannis had a Disney movie made about his story, Joel's story, albeit quite similar to Adetokounmpo's, almost never gets talked about. The disrespect that Joel just received, however, wouldn't have taken place if the format of the All-Star Game positions were correct. As JJ Redick and Kenny spoke on today as well, the NBA needs to re-implement the two center positions. That's why it doesn't matter whether Embiid deserved the final spot over Durant or Giannis or not. I get why the NBA removed the center spot a few years ago with all the versatile combo forwards who are capable of being role men and ball handlers almost simultaneously. Now however, not having a center in the all-star game is a very outdated, seemingly mid-2010s type rule, as the center position has undeniably made a resurgence over the last half decade. Between not just Jokic and Embiid, but Adebayo, Ayton, Zubats, Gobert, even a beast out in Cleveland in Jared Allen, it now seems frustratingly flat out silly from a basketball fan's perspective that we're sitting here and a center who's having one of the most dominant seasons of this generation isn't going to be jumping tip at half for the All-Star game. Biggest shame about this is, is that Joel's easily, and I mean easily, and at the very least, a top three to five player in the game. In the All-Star draft, which takes place directly before the game, we're not going to get to see where Embiid gets chosen. Embiid's been close to winning MVP for years now, but now the media and everyone involved in selecting the two all-star starting lineups have quite simply crossed the line with this one. The lack of respect for the second best, in many people's opinion, the best center on earth. As fans, as the media, really we should be ashamed for how we've collectively portrayed this man. To Sixer fans, even to Joel, I'll be the first one to apologize for that. Nevertheless, let's do our best to make up for this generational snubbing by further breaking down why it's so blasphemous, stay tuned. Right quick though, just 11.9% of my audience is subscribed, so if you aren't already, please subscribe, please drop a like as well. It's sad that we haven't come to respect the dominance, albeit in lieu of how damn frustrating it can be for opposing fans to have to deal with such a physically and mentally annoying presence. Regardless of what happened in the past though, it doesn't mean people shouldn't respect Joel for the monster year that he's having and take away his all-star starting spot this year. What Embiid did prior to 22-23 is neither here nor there when it comes to whether or not he should be a starter in Utah in a few weeks time. 
Embiid's the most physically draining player in the association, both mentally and physically, with his ability to maintain his poise and intensity throughout each one of the 48 minutes, whether he's on the court or sharply locked in on the pine, to the point where he just outlasts you in every sense of the game. You're going to say, D Flow, we don't want flopping at the All Star game. But shots like these from previous All-Star games entail that Joel has more skill in terms of his shooting than many casuals give him credit for, and I actually agree with Elijah Wan for the most part regarding the fact that Embiid should for the most part be backing down his matchup in the post. Joel shouldn't be shooting pull-up shots from three-point range given he's making under 20% of his 1.2 attempts per game of those inefficient chucks, but strictly in terms of his spot-up shooting from deep, Joel's taken his spot up shooting from three point range to a whole different level this year, making a career high by over 7 percentage points on catch and shoots. A 44% catch and shoot three point stroke entails that, in opposition to Hakeem's point, Joel should continue to be mixing in these attempts. Maybe as I mentioned in a separate Philly video, the same thing happens every year to this Embiid-led Sixer squad, but that's neither here nor there when it comes to his performance this season. Man's a superstar, massive L for the NBA here not having realized the trends of the league and not reinstating two center spots. Anyways, in your opinion, should Joel Embiid be starting in this year's All-Star Game? Best answer down below in the comments gets next bit shoutout. Shoutout to firstly for my Warriors video, Hang With Camino, who says the Warriors are actually one of the most talented and deepest teams. Their issue is continuity, mental focus, and effort. They've lost 8-10 to 10 games this year, having huge double-digit leads. That's not normal for them. If they close games, it's a different conversation. They could easily be 32-16. and 16. And secondly, from my shocking players video to Joshua Rosen, who leaves his take for why DeMontis Sabonis was snubbed from my list. Thanks for watching.